So in our previous video, we showed you how to mount volumes manually using the mount and then unmount using the umount command. But we also saw how when you reboot, those volumes don't stay mounted. So the way we fix that is by putting them into the FS tab file. So I'm going to do sudo and I'm going to switch user because I'm going to have to do a lot of this as root and this is just going to make my life easier. So we have a file it's called and I'm going to open up a nano. It's called FS tab. Now think file system table when you think FS tab. And here you're going to see things that are mounted. Now what happens is anything that's in FS tab will automatically mount when the file system boots, unless you specifically tell it not to. So right here we see dev, disk, by ID, and then we see the UUID or the unique identifier for this particular disk. It mounts to root right here. So the first column is the identifier for the disk. The second column is the uh, mount point. We see the file or the uh, file type. So it's ext4 is the file system type. We have defaults, and those defaults set a bunch of default options. And then we have the dump and the pass options. Now, I'm going to direct you to the man pages if you want to look at those in detail. So it has to do with mounting options, read, write, auto mount, don't auto mount, who can mount. Um, the pass has to do with file system checking, things like that. So I'm going to send you there to look at those in uh, more detail. Here you'll see another one. This one is where our slash boot mounts. And again, it's the XT4 defaults 01. See our swap, the option here is not defaults, it's SW, which identifies it as mounted as a swap file, and then 00. Now here's mine. I already added this in because I didn't want you to have to wait while I tried to type it all in. But I want to break it down get rid of the comment there. So I put a comment here identifying this is the second hard drive added to the system. And I set the UUID. Key point here, UUID has to be capitalized or it won't work. So I want to mount this UUID. And then I set right here the ID of the disk. Now, I could do forward slash dev forward slash SDA1 or whatever. Now, there is a problem with that, and that is sometimes when the uh, Linux Disk Manager comes up, it will switch those around, so SDA will become SDB and vice versa. So we use the unique identifier instead. Where do we get that unique identifier? Great question. So I'm going to control Z, which is going to take me to, which is going to background this job for me. And the command we can use is blkid or block storage ID. And this will show me for every device the UUID. And here we see dev SDA1 and its UUID. Now, if I wanted to, and I actually do this most of the time, blk, so I'll do something like lsblk, list block devices, to find the device that I want, SDA1. So let me look at the block ID of forward slash dev forward slash SDA1. And that'll give me just that one. And then I need to take this UUID 23049298 dash, you get it. And I need to take that and I need to put that into my FS tab file so I can write it down or I can flip back and forth between console screens or whatever. But same way, I have to get it down. So then I can go back to my nano, with bring that back to the foreground, and I can put that here in my UUID. So I put my UUID of the drive, and then if it switches from SDA to SDB to SDC, nobody cares because the unique identifier always stays the same. Then I put my mount point. It doesn't matter how many spaces are in between here. I did three because it makes my life easier because it's easier for me to read. So... um. I set my mount point, I set my file system type. I tend to use defaults because I want read write, I want it to auto mount, I want all of these things. So defaults always works well for me, almost always works well for me. And then I'm not worried about the dump or um, pass values. So I just set those to zero. So now I'm gonna do control O to write out and then control X to exit. Now this should make it survive a reboot. I don't think I'm mounted at the moment. No. Now I can do the command mount dash a and what that should do is that should go through and try to mount everything that's in that um, 
FS tab file. So for example, you can create a volume that you don't want auto mounted, but you want it in that FS tab file so you can mount it doing this. Let's see if that actually grabbed it for me. Hey, look, there we go. It is now mounted to MNT volume one. So if I do ls-l forward slash MNT forward slash volume one, there's my data. Now that works great. What if, and I want to, this is going to take a couple of minutes, but I want to do this because I see people do this a lot. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to screw up my file. Nope. Nano forward slash ETC forward slash FS tab. Because this is, you know, a big thing to type in. What happens if you screw it up? So I'm going to change that from a two to a one. And then I'm going to write out and exit and I'm going to go ahead and reboot. Now, at this point, that unique identifier is not correct. So it's not going to be able to find the drive to mount it. And here's what happens. We start going through all of our system. We crash right here. And I use that word crash loosely. Let's talk about this for a minute. We can see that we finished the file system check on our primary partition. Um, so, and then we mounted the boot partition and, or we started mounting the boot partition, then we mounted it and now we come to a stop. Now at this point, it looks like things have crashed completely. So this is why I wanted to show this to you. It actually hasn't. It's continuing to work in the background. And there you see it just popped up after about 30 seconds or so. A start job is running for dev disk by UUID. And it kind of cuts off part of it because that's a long thing. And you see right here where it says 46, 48, 49 seconds out of a minute 30. What that's telling you is it will only sit here for a minute and a half. At the end of that minute and a half, if uh, it still hasn't been able to mount it, it's going to go ahead and skip and keep going. Now, if this is your boot volume or your root volume, that's a problem. You have a major catastrophe because it can't mount root or boot. However, since this is a secondary one that's not required for the operating system, it's actually not an issue. I mean, I don't have my dry or my data. That's an issue. But it's not like the operating system won't actually load. It just waits for a while. And sometimes I see people get patient, impatient and they think they've permanently broken something. You really haven't. Now, if that is root or boot, now you have a problem and you're going to have to probably boot off of something else. So a live boot disk or something. Um, go to terminal, try to mount this drive, find the etcfs tab file and try to fix it that way. But since this was a secondary drive for me, go ahead and log in and sudo nano etc fs tab and here we go i am going to fix that by changing that from a three to a two control o to write out control x to exit now i'm going to go ahead and switch user here so now that i've changed it, it actually hasn't taken effect lsblk is going to show me that so now it's by the way, shifted from SDA to SDB. All right, well, there it goes. That's why we use UUIDs instead of, you know, that dev path. So now if I do mount dash A, it should mount it all, right? LSBLK and lo and behold, it didn't. Now I have that happen to me occasionally. Again, no real cause to panic here. So because I was set to boot, it's for some reason it's not picking it up. I have that happen occasionally. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot. Here's the ultimate test, not the mount dash A, but the reboot. Does it come up on reboot? Because that's what we're really aiming for here. So go through our boot process and we look to see if it hangs for us. And I didn't see a hang there, did you? Bingo, we're up. And then LSBLK. And it's back to SDA1 and it's mounted. LS-L for MNT vol1. And sure enough, it's mounted and there are all of our files. All right, 
So that is how you will set up the FS to set up mount points in the FS tab file to allow new devices that you add, new partitions to automatically mount every time your system boots.